Mom's Geeky Garage. Today we are going to be making some Ghostbuster props. Um, I used to build a lot of Ghostbuster props from from like 1989 when I built this my first slime blower um, all the way until 2009. Um, yeah, I would probably build one to two packs every year. I just build it and sell it. Um, and then around 2009, I kind of got out of it. I started building a I started building a pack. And um, about halfway through, I just kind of abandoned it, and then I moved to Los Angeles and stopped doing it. Um, so it's kind of weird that I haven't done a prop, a Ghostbuster prop, on this show yet. So we're going to do a few episodes of some Ghostbuster props. Um, on this episode, we're going to make a Ghostbuster trap. Um, we're going to basically try to 3D print everything using the PLA printer to print all the big body pieces and the resin printer to do all the detailed uh, little pieces, like knobs and things. Um, and then on another show, we're going to be taking that actual wand that I had started about 15 years ago, and we're going to finish it to look like the afterlife prop. So what we need to do basically to get started is use, find some plans. I always tend to use, uh, the Sean Bishop Vinkman 71 plans because those are the ones I've been familiar with in the last two builds I did. I use those. So, um... You can get those actually nowadays over on the Ghostbuster fan site. You can't get them off Proptopia or his website anymore because they are no longer online. But you can still get them on Ghostbusters fans. Um, so, and then what we're going to do after we do that, we're going to use the plans for measurements. And then we're going to use actual screen use props for reference on paint and final design. Um, so let's get started. All right, first thing I need is some plans. So I went out to Ghostbuster fans and downloaded the Vankman 71 Sean Bishop plans. I've used them before, and they're pretty good. Um, next thing we need to do is go to the computer and start building geometry from these plans. But I got real lucky while looking on Thingiverse for some knobs that someone had already used these plans and did all the geometry. So I'm going to download that and use it and save two days. And now we need to look at our reference photos. So here are the reference photos from Hank's auction. This is a, pa a, a trap that was recently auctioned off. And we're going to use these to look at um, paint and these small details like this bracket here that are not in the plans. Um, each trap was built really different from first movie to second movie, from prop maker to prop maker. Each has different bolt patterns and some individual different spacing and pieces. This is the one I'm using for a visual reference and for my build. All right, so after a couple days of printing, we have all the components for the trap printed. Um, for the base part, we still have to do the side panels, the aluminum panels and stuff like that. Um, and we have started printing the parts for the um, wand that we need. Um, you can see here some of the more uh, detailed, some of the more detailed resin parts. I don't know why this won't focus. So we printed all the knobs on the resin printer along with the uh, resistors. Also got a few things here that we're going to need. Um, got some JB Weld uh, epoxy. This is to kind of glue parts together. Uh, we got some um, Bondo body filler which will be for uh, getting out all the little lines in the 3D prints. Uh, if you can see all these lines, you got to get those out. So we will get those out with that. Now uh, we got a few different stages of sandpaper here. One for knocking off a large amount and then one for more of a final sand. And then some black primer um, and then uh, maybe black paint for the final paint but uh, we'll worry about that later. Okay so the first thing that we're gonna do um, to start getting this uh, ready is to start covering all the parts with the Bondo. Um, so I'm only going to show me doing one, so I'm just going to stack all these parts out of the way for now. And we're going to focus just on this rear, uh, rear box. 
All right, so the first thing that we're going to do <clears throat> to start getting these parts ready to be assembled is to get out all the little grooves that the 3D printer puts in it so we can get smooth parts. Uh, we're going to be doing this with some Bondo um, body repair filler. Uh, if you haven't ever worked with uh, Bondo before, it's just basically a two-part material of the actual uh, the original the cream here. I don't know what this is called, the body filler itself, and the hardener. Uh, what you want to do is basically mix this together and then that will actually start it to cure and harden. And most times when you buy this stuff it comes with a little mixer tool. And the trick with how much you mix together is you want to get it mixed together and have it to the same tone as this mixing tool which is like a salmon color. So if you mix it up and it's too white you can compare the color to the tool and you know if you need to add more hardener or not. So we're going to do that now. Uh, after we get this mixed up all we're going to do is basically smear this over the part and let it dry and then once it dries we can easily sand it off to get a smooth part. So, so I'm just going to take the stuff from the lid here, just put it right here. Okay, that should be enough for this one piece I would think. So now we'll uh, take the hardener, open it and score it a little bit on here. It uh, doesn't take a whole lot. And then you're just going to mix this stuff up until it's all mixed together. You want to mix this up really good. And as you can already tell, you can already tell it's about the same color as the tool, so I guess pretty much right as far as how much to mix together. And you don't want to wait around with this stuff because this stuff does set up pretty quick. So as soon as you get it to the right tone, you're going to want to go ahead and start applying it. Um, and all I'm going to do is just start pushing it on here into the areas that I want smooth. Just make sure you get it in all the grooves. You don't have to build it up real thick, you just want to fill the groove, so you, know, you don't have to you don't have to go crazy with how much you put on here. Uh, if you have a hole in it like this, you want to try to keep that area clean. Um, I'm only trying to get it on the uh, the sides here. I don't need it uh, on the inside or anything. Cause no one's going to see that. So I'm only trying to smooth out the parts that are going to be visible. Make sure everything is well covered. Uh, so that looks like it's pretty good. And this stuff is already setting up. And it's that quick. Like it sets up very fast. Now, if you're doing a bigger piece, and you're needing this to last a longer, you can mix a little less into it and make it more where it's more of a white color than this um, salmon color and you'll have more working time with it, but I tend to like to work fast because I'm doing small parts. Um, and then also too, before it dries, I tend to like to clean up my, my little mixing area so it's not, you know, get that on there and just get that in the trash. So we'll let this dry and then we'll sand it. Okay. Now this has had plenty of time to dry, we're going to go ahead and start sanding it. Just got some um, 80 grit sandpaper. And you're just going to sand it down to the, uh, the 3D print line here.
in like a ventilated area or outside. I'm outside, you can see, because there's a lot of dust. You don't want to breathe this in. I'm sure you all have masks because everyone's wearing a mask right now. So just wear your mask and you'll be good. <sighs> all right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna continue to do this um, until you get most of it knocked off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back through and then we'll primer it. And then after we primer it, we'll come back with finer sandpaper and get it real smooth. All right. So now that we have the majority of the Bondo removed, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, primer it. And then once we primer it, we will sand the primer down with a finer grit of sandpaper. All right, so all the parts sanded down. Um, so we're on the sides here. We got, uh, we're building the aluminum uh, side panels now. Um, right now I'm building the uh, the frame here. I'm just gluing everything together and then uh, soon we'll uh, have the frame built and we can start uh, detailing. All right, so we're on day three, I think, of the build of this. Um, as you can see, we have all the pieces where have been pretty much smoothed out. I mean, I'm still working on some of the stuff. Um, but uh, now it's mostly assembled as far as the main box goes. Um, I also have the uh, aluminum plates ready. Well, some of them. A few of them. Got those ready and I ended up having to like print some of the um, hardwares um, because right now I can't get to a hardware store to actually I can't show that but I can't get to a hardware store to actually purchase any so I just 3d printed out a whole bunch of the uh, the heads because I'm gonna be gluing this together so it's not really screwed together it's all glued so, I just need the look of the head, so I'm just going to, uh, you know, use these 3D printed ones. I think they'll work fine. So, I'm going to just go ahead and finish sanding, some sanding on this and some filling. Uh, and then go ahead and primer this thing, get it ready to go. Finish out the plates and start adding the detail of those. And here's the doors and the, the rear plate here. So, yeah, looking good so far. All right, so now we are kind of taking a little break from the main trap and working on some of the smaller, smaller details. Uh, we are going to be like uh, painting these things and uh, that one's gonna be chrome and then some black ones and then there's some little silver accents that need to go on these knobs and the tip is a little silver dot and I think the top of these are silver so um, and then we'll start uh, assembling thing once we get these knobs painted so for these um chrome looking knobs that were 3d printed i paint these guys with um the spastec mirror chrome um it gives a really nice um looking finish all right so now i'm just in the phase of just kind of assembling everything um we're getting the side panels glued on um we got all the knobbies kind of made here um for the front and the other panel so we're just going to uh, 
start assembling this and then after we get it all assembled we'll start going through the weathering process of weathering this and making it look more like the um, reference photos that we're using all right so we're getting more of the uh, trap assembled and get some of the bolts and screws put in um, still waiting for some parts to uh, to dry I'm putting the uh, red rails on from Ghostbusters 1 onto a Ghostbusters 2 uh, trap but that's okay uh, other than uh, that we're uh, got the ball these are ball bearings these are what are used for wheels on a trap which are just basically skateboard bearings um, so those are the wheels we got those ready and I'm about to prep the doors and the rear panel uh, for paint and assembling the lights and stuff but uh, so far so far so good I I'm not upset with it so far um, everything looks pretty good to me except for that panel there it was 3d printed and looks like crap I might reprint that with the resin printer that way it looks really good but for now we're gonna just keep that all right <clears throat> so we're still kind of assembling pieces getting things ready uh, for the doors I really lucked out I went to the, the auto parts store and just found some of this because I was gonna paint these on but I found this and it's the exact length to fit across both doors so all I had to do was cut one strip and then just use a, a razor blade to kind of trim it all and make it all really nice uh, so I got lucky on that so we're on our final stages of just kind of gluing on the last little bars um, Got the front detail, got all the button detail, all that stuff done. So now it's just about assembling the last few pieces and then we can move on to weathering, I think. For the top of the handle here, uh, most people will just use one of these guys and we'll just drill a hole and have one of these guys there. Um, but I'm using the reference photos um, from the auction site and they have more of like a kind of a slide button or a press button here so I've tried to match that as close as I could all right so we got the last final uh, the last final little bits of uh, detail put in so now we can move on to uh, weathering all right now that we have oh where are you going now that we have the uh the trap built um now we're going to work on the actual weathering of this uh this trap um this is like the step where like um this is the step where the most prop makers go wrong because either they use the wrong technique or they just overdo it in general um what i consider the wrong technique and it's i don't know it's not really that fair because i've done this technique in my first few props which is dry brushing and that's where you would just take a paintbrush uh get gray paint on it or silver paint and you just kind of hit the high areas of everything and you put like a gray edge around everything which for just like a Halloween prop, that's fine, you know, no one's going to notice it. But when you're trying to do a screen accurate replica, you really need to put more advanced um, techniques into your weathering process. And that's what we're going to do here. My first thing I would say, if you're going to weather a Ghostbuster prop, use reference photos. Here I have HD photos that are super high res of screen used props that have recently been auctioned off um, from a multiple angles you can see every scratch where they're worn where they're not worn extra details that are on the prop that are not maybe in the blueprints like this switch which I actually skipped this but there's a switch here um, this little bracket here the button on top things like that um, just use reference photos. I mean, you can get, you know, you can get a lot of 
information from these exactly how it should look um so that's what I'll be doing I'll be using those um to actually do this I'm going to be using a few things uh, I'm going to be using some mirror chrome this is just for doing scratches I got some rub and buff this will be doing the wearing um this is friction wearing, where like something's rubbed against it over time, it slowly scratches the paint off. That's what I use rubbing before. And then I have some, um, I have some thousand grit sandpaper, which will I'll do to do light wearing, where I'll actually sand the actual surface just to kind of give it a little polish. And then a brush to apply some of the mirror chrome uh, on areas that need a little bit more scratching and things like that. So. What we're going to do is we're just going to start working around it. I'm basically going to look at the reference photos, get an idea of how the scratches should be, go to the same part on ours, and try to mimic this look. Alright. So let's get started on that. Alright, so the first thing that I'm going to do to the whole prop is I'm going to take my thousand grit sandpaper and I'm going to think of areas that are going to have a lot of friction, which you can already see it's actually happened here naturally just for me handling it. Areas where like corners and stuff, the primer itself when it gets rubbed by anything, it will slowly get like a gloss to it because it basically polishes the material down to a shine. Um, we can go through with some uh, flat sandpaper and kind of like go over those areas very lightly. I mean, you're not trying to like sand this in any way. You're just kind of hitting the high areas with this, and it's just going to make the matte material that is the uh, the primer or whatever paint you use. It's going to like kind of just shine that area slightly. So here, if you look. It's just kind of like slightly dinging up the paint, making it look not so pristine. You're not trying to over sand this either. You're just trying to get it enough to kind of... Uh, polish the kind of corners and stuff. You kind of already see how that kind of looks a little bit beat up. I'm not sanding off the paint. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of wearing to it. Very light wearing. Alright, so we took some time with the sandpaper and went around the model. And what you can see is it, it just adds a little bit of... Um, roughness to it. It's not quite pristine anymore. Uh, went over the handles. Um, pretty much went over the whole thing with the sandpaper. And it just kind of dirties it up. It, it hasn't really done much except for scuff it up here and there. We're not down to the metal yet. This is just kind of preparing the uh, surface to kind of look a little bit more uh, dingier. Like you can see this, this, this is really dingy. And we're actually going to come back later with uh, a little bit of white um, watered down paint and kind of add more to this but uh, just the sandpaper itself you can already see it's starting to add a little bit of dinginess to the surface and that's that's getting it almost uh, almost there so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the rub and buff and this is where we're going to do uh, friction wearing to the point where it's wore down through the actual paint into the metal um, we don't need a lot of this. Um, this is going to be. Uh, hold on, let me get that in focus. Uh, focus. Um, we don't need a whole lot of this. Um, in areas where it has friction worn, um, a real good place to see is here. Oh, oh no. Here on the handle. Oh, I can't get it focused. Why? Why are you being so difficult? Um, 
little areas like this, like around this edge of the handle, we can do it there. Um, little areas like this little hot edge here. And, and, and you're not doing it around every edge. You can see that there's sections that are still good here. It's just little spots. So we're going to start doing that, but we're not going to do it super heavy. Um, once again, like I said, use the reference photos. Just copy the reference photos. So we'll, we'll do that hot strip here. We'll do the hot strip that is around... I am having a hard time keeping things in focus today. Um, we'll do the area around the handle and that area here. So let me show you how that's done. All right, so squirted a little bit of the rub and buff on a piece of paper. And I just use my fingers for this. Um, I feel like that's the best way to do it. What you want to do is you want to rub it and kind of get most of it off. You can see how this stuff acts. When you rub it, it kind of feathers out and you can kind of you kind of rub it and build it up and do stuff like that. So let's say like this rear corner here. So all you're going to do is you're just going to lightly, let me get this in focus again. Jeez. Why is this not focusing? Okay, so all you're going to do is lightly use your finger and you just rub it very lightly. Um, there we go. Very lightly. And you don't need to go crazy with this. Um, and make sure that when you do it, you don't have a whole lot on your finger. You kind of want to wipe on the stuff. Wipe a little bit of it off. And then come in here. And just hit the corners. Like that. Not a whole lot needed. You don't need a whole lot. Just just a little bit. Alright, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use the reference photos and go around and go ahead and start doing all the spots that have that solid rough um, or solid wear to it um, and then we'll come back all right so did the rub and buff as you can see here try to follow the reference photo as much as possible and the thing you want to do is when you're doing this stuff you want to limit it you don't want to do too much it's very you can do just a very subtle amount and get a good look across um, you know follow the reference pictures Put it where the reference is worn, but don't do too much. Um, because you do too much, um, it will look really artificial. And that's where most people go wrong when they do the dry brush. They'll just dry brush everything and just do too much wearing, and it's just not realistic. Um, do slight corners. Try not to do constant lines. I kind of messed up here. You want areas where you still have paint. You just want it to go like where, no where, then where. And um, just do very subtle because there's still another step after this where we're going to be doing more, um, more. So the next the next type of wearing we're going to do over that rub and buff is uh, that picture is like really tiny. We got a better picture. Here we go. Um, so now what we're going to do is the scratches. Now the scratches are very similar to the rub and buff step. Except for these are little nicks, like these little nicks that are random. They're not the actual strips, they're the little nicks. You can see a bunch here. Here and there, there's little nicks. Um, especially on the handle, you can see that really heavy here, all these little nicks. Now, I do this two different ways uh, when I do this. First, first thing to note is don't use bristles like a brush and try to paint them on. That's not going to do a great job. If anything, what I do is I will dip the, the handle of the brush into the paint and just use the edge and kind of scrape it. Um, and tap it. Scrape, tap, rub it like that. That will do a good job of getting nicks. Or using something with a sharp point um, like a sculpting tool and actually dipping the sculpting tool and actually just drawing the scratch in which I can probably do all of it with this brush just by dipping the brush 
and just just kind of nicking it like that um, and that tends to work so I'm going to use these reference photos and I'm going to kind of start mimicking these scratches and like I said once again follow the reference photos just if you see a nick in this area just kind of go to that area uh, on your prop and try to get as close to this look as possible. So we'll put some nicks here and we'll work our way around the model um, like that. Alright, so now we have our paintbrush and we're going to just like a little section here. You can see these little scratches here. Um, I will demonstrate that somewhere around here. And uh, so the first thing is I got my, my silver paint here. And I'm going to dip the tip of my brush in it. And then it's just about coming in here and just tapping it. You know, here and there. Not to do a whole lot. Just here and there. And like I said, use the reference photo. Kind of get an idea where the scrapes and scratches are. Oh, that was a little heavy. My bad. Oh, that's too much. See, that's too much there. I'm just going to wipe that. Wipe that off. Okay. Another thing is, on some of these scratches here, when, when the scratches happen, they kind of like, um, they go like, kind of blotchy. So, you can like, tilt the brush... certain areas and kind of create that kind of blotchy kind of war but you don't want to do it everywhere like every once in a while you could put like a random one somewhere just like oh I want like a random one here or something like that that's fine but don't do too much don't too much this is kind of the the art of being very subtle Do a little heavy I'll do a little heavier here since this is kind of a corner but see that it's just enough um, I, I kind of fucked up there but I'm coming here and And you can do like uh, just random scratches too every once in a while, but like I said, don't uh, don't go too too crazy. <laughs> there we are. You can already see how that's uh, how that's looking compared to our our reference over here I might have went a little heavy with it on this side but just for trying to show you how to do it but I'm gonna finish doing that to the whole thing and then we'll be on our last uh, few steps of uh, aging this thing another technique I do when I'm doing these is rolling the brush so that's like uh, like down this strip I'll put the brush at an angle and I'll roll it. A lot of times it puts a really unique, uh, unique scratch pattern on it, um, like around this this bottom lip here. You know, just roll it across. Oh, it's kind of hard when it's rolling away from you, but 
Oh no. All right. So I've went around and did the little scratches using uh, our reference photos to kind of get an idea where scratches would be, where wearing is going to be, and really try not to do more than I seen picture. Um, because once you do too much, it starts looking very artificial. Um, now, the trap that I am referencing is a auctioned off screen use pack that was used both in uh, Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2. So it's been handed off from person to person. It's been in two different productions. It's been auctioned off, I think, twice. So it's quite beat up. Um, and it's beat up more than it probably would be in the, in the film. But I wanted mine to look like that one, not really one that was used in the film. So I, I copied it as much as possible. We have a few more steps, um, which are um, adding a little bit of rust. Um, the, the, these props don't rust a whole lot because most of them is aluminum or wood. Um, but the hardware tends to rust and give you little rusty areas. Very subtle. So to do that, what you want to do is you want to... Um, what I tend to do is I use really, really watered down um, rust colored paint. Very watered down. And I just kind of drip it on the screws and let it just kind of naturally dry however it dries. Um, you can see here on like a wand that's been aged, um, the hardware gets quite rusty. So does the metal. Anywhere there's metal, it does get rusty once the paint wears off. Um, this is all natural rust on this one. Um, but if we can uh, match the look of that old wand... Um, to this trap will be okay. Um, after we do the rust, there's one more thing that I need to do, and that is just kind of overall wash. I'm going to do like a really milky wash and kind of overwash the whole thing with a little bit of a, a milky kind of uh, wash because this is not pristine. It's been really dirty over the years, and I need to add those years of dirt onto this. Um, you can see this one's actually really dirty because it's been in storage for years. But getting a look like this without it sitting for years would be the overall uh, overall goal um, for me. So that's what we're going to do next. All right, so we got the major wearing done. Now we're going to do a little bit of rust uh, around the bolts, usually just on the bolts themselves. Um, and maybe some accents around some other metal parts. So I tend to mix up somewhat of rust color and I water it down really, really watery. You want this stuff to be very watery. More watery probably the better. Um, So you just drip a little on there around it and you let that dry and it's going to dry and it's it's uh, it's going to look okay when it dries. So I'm going to go around and do that to everything where there's metal and then uh, let it dry and then we'll come back. All right so now we have the prop all done. Um, I still need to add stickers. But um, here's a look at the thing. I think it came out pretty good for, I think it took four days to make it. Um, yeah, I think it came out pretty nice. It's not perfect, but I like it. It'll look good on the shelf.